Hi, Clara Applewhite of Clara Applewhite Designs. In this video, I will show you how to apply the silk paint. So I have taken everything I need out. I have my legend and the colors that I'm going to be using. Remember, shake each bottle thoroughly because they do tend to separate and in the bottle. So you want to shake it thoroughly, each one. I also have a brush. I will be painting the field, so I have my large Sumi brush. And this brush is laden with water for any little problems that come up. And I have a smaller brush, which I'm painting with. The problems that come up may be sometimes the color, the, sorry, the resist doesn't go all the way and you have a little bleeding. So with the water laden brush, I wipe away as much of the color as possible and quickly dab a little pinch of the gutta and place it right there. Now I can do that. It's no problem because I know what my ground color is going to be. We have our paper towel with a little, a little damp for wiping the brush. Now this is how I was taught. You always hold the bottle in your left hand with your paper towel and your brush and you begin to paint. Now, when you're painting and I'm going to paint this leaf motif. It's really a seaweed motif. You always try to move away from your body. So you can see where you're going. Now you notice how much paint this brush is able to hold. I'm going to dip. So you move away from the body as much as you can. Sometimes you actually have to come towards the body, but you have to be very careful. So we continue. And once you see your the tip of your brush begin to separate, you add more color. Now, if by chance you put too much color on the brush, you literally wipe off and use the br brush to dab off the paint, the excess paint, or you transfer it to the next point on the motif. That way you don't have puddling. And the puddling you'll see at the end where the color starts to, it makes a little bit of a cloud. And if you want a flat color, flat finish, you need to take away the excess color. So you see right here, I'm moving towards myself, but this is a short triangular leaf. No problem. If you got a long section, you really want to try and move away. Now I'm moving across my body. So bottom line, you're planning you plan the colors that you're using and of course the design beneath helps you to know exactly where you're putting the color, especially when I start painting the brain coral. Another thing you do, and I can only show a short piece, you Press down with your brush and release to the point. 
That way you're releasing the dye or the paint and pushing it towards the point of that motif. Press down and move the color. You always want to keep the front of the color wet. And you'll hear me talk about that when we're doing the field. Now for painters, people who paint on canvases, sometimes when you're painting, you get sidetracked by something in the design. You can't afford to stop when you're painting with dyes, because if you stop and go to another part of the design, the dye is going to dry in that area and you create a hard line that you may not want. So you've seen the rest down here. The majority of the leaves have a flat, fairly flat color. Okay, so I'm going to do one more. And we're moving away again and pushing the color along with the tip of your brush. So now we're getting, we're finishing up with the leaves, the seaweed, which is what that's representing, and going on to the brain coral. Now bear in mind, I'm not painting this in the actual color. I've used this as a design. So now we change, wash the brush out, and we're going into the painting of the coral. Now I'm using two colors, claret and brass as the main colors. You can see, I hope, claret and brass as the main colors of the brain, coral. Okay, so that's what we're working with. So, gone are the days where you start with the lighter color first and move on. I'm a printmaker, that's how we work. We print the lightest color first and then move on. In batik, it's the same thing. Because of what we're doing in the Guta Serti technique, you have made the design yourself. So for you, it's like a paint by numbers. So you don't necessarily have to start with the lightest color work first and then work backwards. You can begin wherever you deem necessary. So now I'm going to be painting this area, the curvilinear designs, with the claret. So off we go. Same. Now here, while I was doing, drawing the design yesterday, remember I told you, because of what we're doing, I make sure the motifs touch each other so that the color on the inside doesn't float into the field. So while I paint, you'll notice that quite a few of these motifs on the outer edge of the brain coral touch or kiss one another. So I'm pushing the dye or the paint along to the end and picking up any excess. I'm going to do this as quickly as possible so that you could see the color 
in the background. Okay, so now this particular motif branches off. So what you need to do is keep that front line wet so that a hard line doesn't happen. So I'm looking to see which one I'm going to do next. Start here and move away. Try not to start, you're starting at an end. Try not to start like in the middle of a motif. Then you're going to be pushing yourself to do the impossible. So always look at where you're starting and look at where you're going. This motif goes around so it doesn't branch off like the last one. So now we're on to the brass, which is the background of the brain coral. And you will see, because I closed in these different, the edges, touch, had them touch, this color is not going to go into the field. You will also notice, now I just showed, told you not to start in the middle of a loop. But because it is the background color, I am going to have to work very quickly. See, I put a lot of color down and I'm pushing it quickly and trying to keep the front line from drying. So you see these little, even within this space, I have put some design blocks. So I have to move very quickly. And even if I don't have, I still try to keep moving, but keeping that front line wet. Okay, so that was a long bit. Pick up some from there. Here we go again. Here's another section, two arms, keep it moving, pushing it towards the end of that section. Here we go again. Now remember, dye is going to, wet dye is going to move on its own. But what you're trying to do, what we're trying to do is just push it along quickly. If I do this, you'll notice that the die keeps moving. So your job is to keep that front line, as I said, wet so it doesn't create a line. Because the die will dry. That front line will dry. Remember, in these big areas, let me just finish this and show you. In large areas like here, whoops, and now I see you press down and pull up. You know, I have to move quickly because this is a long section with no break but here. And down and pull up. And you get your color moving. Down and pull up. finish that area quickly just by doing that technique.
Alrighty, so now I'm gonna go on to the other part of the design and we'll get back to one another when I'm getting ready to do the field, paint the field, because I want to do a little watercolor technique in there. So once I've finished painting the major motifs, I'm going to let that dry and then I'm going to come back in and do the watercolor technique just as a little added attraction for the background. And so even for the beginners, you'll see a little bit of how we texture in silk painting. See you then. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. Do send me any questions you may have. I'll be happy to answer them. I've been thinking of doing a paid online course, so please be sure to comment if you are interested. Also, check out my Instagram at Clara Designs Art.